Next principle that we're going to talk about is that markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. When we're talking about market, we're talking about the um, a group of buyers and sellers that have a particular goal in common. Sellers, they usually want to produce a product and sell it at a certain price and they want to make money and buyers they're all the time looking for a certain product that is going to bring them some kind of value and of course remember buyers all the time want to um, purchase a product at a lower price in order to organize a market to create a market or to or to organize this economic activity we usually need to answer the questions what goods are we going to produce in our society? Um, how many of those goods and services are we going to produce in our society? How are we going to produce it? At what price are we going to sell it? Who is going to consume these goods? So when we answering these questions, we actually organizing economic activities. Now we need to talk about who is actually determined in our economy or in our societies what goods to produce, how much to produce it, what price to sell it, how to produce it. So, and if we're going to talk about two different structures of economy, um, and we're going to talk about the market economy that is decentralized, and also we're going to talk about centralized economy, then in decentralized economy that is a market economy, a good example, for example, it's going to be actually the country of the United States. Those questions of how to produce a product who is going to produce it, at what price to sell it, it's usually done, those decisions are done by many firms and many households. So once again, government doesn't interfere in the economy and government doesn't tell you what are we going to produce in our society, at what price are we going to sell it, how are we going to produce it, and who is going to buy it. So once again, this is the example of market economy. Decentralized economy where government is not telling telling you what to produce, how to produce, and at what price to sell it. The opposite of market economy is going to be centralized economy. It's going to be centralized economy. And a good example of centralized economy, it's going to be a former Soviet Union. So guys, believe it or not, in the former Soviet Union, um, government actually was deciding what to produce, how to produce, and at what price to sell it. And um, you probably seen, sitting there and thinking, well, how is it so that government dictates you, you know, what to do? And um, in reality, yes, in the Soviet Union, um, I guess government uh, was, um, you know, kind of thinking that they were in the best position to know how to allocate our limited resources um, in, in our country, in the Soviet Union. Um, you can, um, you know, probably ask a question, well, did they succeed? And of course, known from the history, the answer is no. Um, once again, I grew up in the Soviet Union, and I can tell you that uh, grown up, even it was, you know, 30 years ago, um, if you're talking about goods and services that we were able to consume, it was a very, very limited amount of goods and services that you can actually find in the store. Um, first of all, whatever what whatever was produced, it was a kind of all similar, okay? Because remember, another thing that government did is um, actually during Soviet Union they were uh, trying to make everybody equal, um, and then um, if you want to actually consume more, that a lot of times you actually don't have, um, you know, goods to. Um, to buy and consume um, in the former uh, economy of Soviet Union because once again, in reality, government was not interested in providing the best value for, um, for the buyers. Um, so therefore, um, you know, once again, Soviet Union, they didn't last, well, they last for many years, but uh, the well-being of um, uh, buyers in that country was actually uh, very, very low. I can um, give you the example that um, how is it so that the government, once again, remember, Soviet Union is a centralized economy. A kind of government is the center, okay, centralized economy. Government is the center and they're making actually all decisions about the production. They're making all decisions about who is going to buy, how we're going to produce those products. Um, so and I'm going to give you the example. Um, when my um, father, once again, many years ago uh, during Soviet Union, I think it was like a year probably at about like 1986. So he was a manager at a, a plant that was producing, um, you know, 
um, building materials like insulation and stuff like that. And government was dictating us who is going to buy what. So because he was a manager at that plant for, you know, quite a few years, he was eligible to go ahead and actually purchase a car. Once again, if we are going to be in the market economy, let's suppose you decided, okay, I, I need a new car or I want a new car. What are you going to do? You're going to go and if you're in Greenville and you're going to different car dealerships and you're going to shop for your car, isn't it? In centralized economy, once again, when government is telling you what to do, okay, my father pretty much was told that here you go, a month from today, you will have opportunity to buy a car. And they pretty much, um, like literally the story was that up until two days before my, my, my dad bought a car, he didn't know what kind of car he's going to buy, what kind of color that car is going to be, what kind of model that car is going to be. Pretty much they brought him to that car and they say, here you go. This is your car. If you want it, you have two days, you need to pay and you can have that car. So once again, the production was very, very limited because government was not interested in producing and um, bringing, you know, value to uh, to the society. And um, once again, therefore, government was, uh, you know, at a certain point or, you know, for, for a lot of things, they were dictating us who is going to buy what kind of good. Um, so we're going to get from the slide that um, once again, in reality, if we want to have a better outcome for, um, you know, for allocation of resources, that government have to stay away from the, um, you know, from the economy and doesn't have to dictate us what to do. Um, so if we um, are talking about the value of the goods, then um, Adam Smith, he is, um, you know, I guess, classical economist, and he wrote this book, The Wealth of the Nation, and he said that in decentralized economy, the decision making of what to produce, how to produce, and, um, you know, at what price to sell it is actually led by invisible hand. And what does it mean? We need to understand what this invisible hand means. It means that a kind of those decisions, once again, those three questions, what to produce, how to produce at what price to sell it, is actually going to be done by interaction, a lot of buyers and sellers. And once again, whatever value buyers and sellers actually place on that product, okay, then that product is going to be produced in our society. For example, for example, before we go to these prices and invisible hands, let's suppose we're going to talk about our iPhone, okay? Let's suppose we're going to talk about iPhone. So once again, Tell me why Steve Jobs many years ago decided to produce iPhone. And of course, the answer is going to be well, because he wanted to make money. And the answer is going to be correct. Yes, he wanted to make money. Also, Steve Jobs, you know, he wanted to change the society and he actually did in a certain way. But once again, he had some kind of incentive, isn't it? He, ca he had some kind of incentive because he's actually going to make money. So when he made that decision, let's suppose he produced that iPhone and he's going to put it on the market and he's going to say, well, here you go. This price of the iPhone is $2,000, okay? So here you go. The price of this iPhone is actually $2,000, okay? So if I'm a buyer, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to look at this iPhone and I'm going to say, well, you know what? It's a very nice device. You know, it has really good features, but you know what? $2,000 is actually too much. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this iPhone and I'm going to go away. Other buyers in different stores, they're going to do the same thing. You know, they're going to say, well, here you go. You know, um, you know, device is very good, but $2,000 is actually too expensive. They're going to put it back and they're going to go away or, or walk away from the store. What is the creator of this iPhone is going to do? They're going to look at the behavior of the buyers and they're going to say, well, you know what? Maybe $2,000, this is actually a little bit too much for our buyers. What are we going to do? We're going to have to decrease this price. So seller is going to have to figure out how to produce this product in a different way. You see, we're answering all those three questions. Okay, how to produce this product, how to produce it cheaper. Okay, let's about this. They, they figured it out. They did some changes. And now actually this product is going to be $800. Okay, so iPhone now the price is actually um, $800. So I'm go go going to the store, I'm picking up this iPhone and I'm saying, well, you know what, the price is actually much lower. Okay, it's going to bring me this value. It has like really nice apps that um, um, I can download. It has this touch screen. I can use internet. I can, you know, use Skype and stuff like that. You know what, now the value of this iPhone is actually really good for me and I'm going to go ahead and purchase it. So pretty much this price of the product, price of the product is going to determine this interaction of buyers and sellers and it's going to reflect the value to buyers 
and the cost of producing of these goods, to, goods um, uh, to sellers. So once again, interaction of buyers and sellers are going to determine what product to produce, how to produce it, and at what price to sell it. Just, just think about it. Just If you're sitting right now and watching this um, video, look, look around your room and, I don't know, probably you have a water bottle, probably you have your computer, you have, um, I don't know, your backpack. Why somebody decided to actually to produce this product? Did the government told to that producer, you know what, go ahead and produce this backpack, go ahead and produce this water bottle? And the answer is no. It, it, the, the water bottle was produced because there is some seller who said, you know what, I'm going to produce it and I'm going to sell it because I have an interest, I have an incentive. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to make money. And then once again, interaction of buyers and sellers are going to determine at what price that water bottle is going to be sold on the market. And this is the example of invisible hand. So once again, this invisible hand, okay, it's actually guys, the self-interest households and firms to make the decisions about what to produce, how to produce, at what price to sell it. And those decisions are going to maximize our society well-being. Once again, guys, this is the example of market economy where government doesn't interfere and doesn't tell you what to do. Versus if we talking about the economy of this former Soviet Union, this is where the government was telling you what to produce, how to produce it, at what price to sell it. And once again, in those economies, okay, the um, well-being of households and well firms, we really didn't have firms because the government was producing everything. Okay, the well-being of households was not maximized in centralized economy.